going on, Jeff Rieger? Another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for the 11th of March. It's a Monday. It's 2024. And I would like to say welcome, everybody, to the start of NFL free agency noon today. Teams and players can start negotiating contracts with each other. On Wednesday, we hear that those players will sign those contracts. But today, we should know who the Lions are interested in. Maybe they trade for Legereus Sneed. I hope that to be the case. Maybe they go a different road in free agency. Maybe they do nothing. Brad Holmes pretty much said from the get-go, don't expect anything crazy. So we'll wait and we'll see. Tomorrow, I got to believe the daily ticket's going to be all about free agency. But today, we got to focus on a totally shitty, pathetic weekend in Detroit sports. Now, to be fair, as I'm recording this podcast, it's 613 on a Sunday. Michigan State is still playing. So the Spartans, who fell down big to the Hoosier Daddies yesterday at Assembly, they still have a chance to win and at least semi-save the weekend. But for the most part, this has been the bloodiest weekend in Detroit sports that I've ever remembered. Just an awful weekend. Where do you want to start? You want to start with Michigan basketball? They lose by 15 to Nebraska. On senior day, there was legitimately nobody there. There might have been like, I don't know, four people, maybe five. To be fair, there was like, I don't know, a third of Chrysler Arena showed up. I actually saw some Michigan State people talking shit about Michigan fans, saying, what a pathetic fan base. You don't show up on senior day to support your kids. Like, why would you? Product's awful. Do you know that they lost a school record 23rd game? yesterday finished last in the big Ten for the first time since 1967 and there's rumors and reports that Jawan howard's going to be back like what the hell are we doing this team has seemed disengaged unpassionate for pretty much the majority of the season it's been a colossal shit show and you're going to bring the head coach back but I wouldn't doubt it, considering Ward Manuel runs the athletic department, and that seems to be like in shambles, too. So Michigan gets their ass kicked, as you could assume they would. Regular season over, on now to the Big Ten tournament, which I got to believe they'll lose in the first round, and then the season officially, thank God, will be over. Red Wings are on some kind of skid, aren't they? Over the weekend, they lose not one, but two games. They lose a gimme Friday in the desert against the Coyotes team that had lost 16 of 18 games. They had played the night before. The Wings roll into the desert. It's a home game because there's so many Wings fans in Arizona to watch this game. And the Wings no-showed in the first period. Literally no-showed. Down 3-0 to the Coyotes of all teams in the first 20 minutes. Ended up losing 4-0. Couldn't even get a goal. Then they play the second game of the back-to-back. Showed a little more hard in Vegas but ended up losing five to three. Do you know when you watch this podcast or listen to this podcast, the wings might not be in a playoff spot anymore. Less than two weeks ago, the wings were nine points up on the playoff cut line. Now Islanders can catch them. Capitals can catch them. The wings might miss the playoffs. They had an 84% chance to make the playoffs. Then they put that stupid patch on the jersey, the priority patch. Next thing you know, they lose five straight. They don't even compete in most of these games. Dylan Larkin got hurt. Michael Rasmussen might be hurt. He blocked a shot with his wrist on Saturday. Nothing's gone right, and they might miss the playoffs. Steve Eiserman didn't make any moves either, essentially, at the trade deadline. Like, my God, what a shitty weekend. But we're just getting started. Because it wouldn't be a weekend without talking about the lowly Pistons, who gave up 142 points to the Mavs. 142 points to the Mavs on Saturday night. But they suck. Pistons do, not the Mavs. And we knew these things happen. But the big news coming out of the Pistons, and this is just unbelievable. Did you see what happened with Trey Weaver? At Ellie Bosch NBA. First, I saw post this video, and I had to work yesterday. I was sitting out of my car. I was eating a little Subway. I was getting ready to come in to do a four-hour show, and I just happened to look. Here, I'll just show you. You've seen this video. I don't know how to put this video on this Daily Ticket episode, 
But you've seen this video, have you not? That's Troy Weaver right there yelling at a fan. Troy saying, you're lucky I don't kick your ass. The fan says back, Troy, you suck. Next thing you know, the fan gets kicked out. You have the GM of the Detroit Pistons talking shit to a fan. You've won 10 games. Why are you sitting with the fans anyway? Apparently what happened was Troy always sits with the fans. This fan in particular wearing a Red Wings coat and shirt went up to Troy and told him how bad he was at his job. Troy didn't like it. Troy got upset. Troy said, you're lucky I don't kick your ass. The fan's like, wait, 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 wait. He's threatening me to security that came over to kick the fan out. The fan ends up getting kicked out. And Troy Weaver will not speak to anybody. ESPN reached out to Weaver for comment. Troy would not return the comment. Now, I got a couple things, and then I'll give you more details about the story. First of all, you are the GM of the Pistons. Your team blows. You make millions of dollars. Why are you sitting with the fans? Like, you can sit wherever you want, but I got to believe you got a suite at the LCA that you can sit at, be comfortable. Nobody's going to talk shit to you. That's number one. Number two, if you're Troy Weaver and you make millions of dollars, you're a smart guy. Don't you think fam might try to go at you a little bit? You kind of deserve it, don't you? As long as the fan isn't going over the line, nothing racial, nothing personal about Troy or his family. But if he says you can't do the job, well, he's kind of right. You can't do the job. You've been here four years, man. Team's got 10 wins. Perpetually rebuilding. So the fans right. And by the way, if you're sitting with the fans, and as long as, again, he doesn't cross the line, he should be able to heckle. I got no problem with a fan heckling. I used to heckle all the time back in my day. I used to piss off players. It was a great feeling when I knew I got to a player. Albert Bell got to him. Mike Henneman got to him. The list goes on and on and on, mostly baseball players at the old Tiger Stadium. But there was a certain high that went with the ability to heckle somebody, usually in a clever fashion. I never went over the line, didn't need to. I was a genius heckler. Not a great radio host, but I was, I was a great heckler, I must say. But yeah, there was a couple times where the players react to you, and you're like, yeah, because that's the only reason you're doing it anyway. So this fan heckles Troy Weaver. Troy says, you're lucky I don't kick your ass. That's his response. I would have said, hey, Troy, you don't kick anybody's ass. You've got 10 wins. <laughs> I did a radio show yesterday. And Brian Chapman came in after I was done. We did a little crosstalk. And Brian brought up a great point. He's like, listen, if two people are going to be maybe kicked out of a basketball game, who's going to be kicked out first? The guy that says you're lucky I don't kick your ass or the guy that says you suck at your job? You can make the case that Troy deserved to be kicked out instead of the fan. The funny thing is then we got numerous texts all saying the same thing. At the next game, instead of chanting sell the team, I don't know if they do that anymore. I don't even know if Piston fans go to games. They're so bad. But the next game, they should chant, Kick Troy out. Kick Troy out. Kick Troy out. Like, how ridiculously embarrassing. You got the GM of the Detroit Pistons, a legendary franchise, a historically great franchise. You got the GM going at the fans. Dude, this fan, I would assume, paid money to go to your game. You're going at the paying customers. You have won 10 games. What right do you have to go after anybody? Just sit and take it or don't sit at all with the fans. Go sit in the suite. We had a caller that called up, said, who am I? I'm a moron, me, because I said Troy shouldn't sit with the fans. He can sit with the fans, but he should expect what's coming. I do a radio show every day. I open up the ticket text. They're all negative. They all want to kill me. This fan simply told Troy he wasn't good at his job, and Troy reacted poorly. So now in addition to having a god-awful basketball team, you got a GM that tells the fan, you're lucky I don't kick your ass. But here's the particulars. Let me read this to you because I wanted to get the fan on the radio so bad. He never called in. 
I was hoping somebody, a friend of the fan, might have heard my radio show yesterday and would have got the fan to call it. But it didn't reach ESPN. Because I remember seeing the video at like 1.30 yesterday when it was first tweeted out. It's now everywhere. It spread like wildfire. Here's the ESPN article. It says, Pistons GM Troy Weaver fires back at heckling fan in stands. Detroit Pistons GM Troy Weaver had an expletive-laced response to a heckling fan in the stands and pointed the man out to security at Little Caesars Arena. The heated exchange, which was shared on social media, occurred during Saturday's game, a 142-124 loss to the Mavs. You threaten me, the unidentified man was heard saying to Weaver on the video. Weaver declined to comment on Sunday. Jeffrey Calloway, a 46-year-old season ticket holder for Detroit, said he was sitting near Weaver when the fans approached the team's general manager twice before being escorted away. So the fan goes up to Troy, probably tells him he sucks. Then he goes up to him again, and then he gets escorted away. Quote, this is from the season ticket holder. The guy that was in the incident with the Red Wings stuff on came over and was pointing at the scoreboard earlier in the game, unquote. Callaway said in a telephone interview on Sunday, quote, Troy Weaver just shrugged his shoulders and said, okay, and the guy went back to his seat. Then it goes on, when Jalen Duran got ejected midway through the fourth quarter, the guy came back and told him that he was terrible at his job. So the guy came back and told Troy, hey, you're terrible at your job. Then Troy Weaver was telling the fan he had to leave. And that's when ushers or security walked over, unquote. Well, first of all, all he did was walk over to Troy Weaver and said, you're terrible at your job. Troy makes millions of dollars to have a god-awful basketball team. Like, just take the rip and move on. He should have said, yeah, I am terrible at my job. Pretty cool I still have this job because the owner won't fire me. It goes on to say, the fan was escorted away from the seating area by security workers. And then it goes on to tell you how bad the Pistons are. Let me know in the comment section. Maybe I'm being too tough on Troy. This is ridiculous. Is this a fireable offense? I mean, he's not going to get fired. You're lucky I didn't kick your ass, he says. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. That guy is paying for tickets to see your shitty product. You should thank him. So what? Tells you you stink at your job. Just take it. Move on. Like I'm going to do right now. I want to know what you think of this interaction. Maybe I'm making too big of a deal out of it. I don't know. Anyway, let me check the Michigan State score for you. So we can find out if this truly is the worst weekend in the history of Detroit sports. Or maybe Sparty saved us. Currently, ooh, Indiana's up by one with 256 left to go. So Sparty could lose this game. Let me get some comments, and then we're going to go home. All right? I hope you enjoy your day. The last podcast was about Legereus Sneed. I said the Lions have the need for Sneed. Some people like. Let me read you the reaction. Here we go. Comments. This one comes from official underscore savage 9027. Sutton gets way too much hate for being in a bad pass defensive scheme. Now, you're probably right. Listen, Cam Sutton took a lot of grief. He was never supposed to be your top corner even. So, he's going to be back. If you go get a luxurious Sneed, who, by the way, a lot of Lions fans don't seem to be down with that idea for some reason or another. But Sneed's your top cornerback, and then Sutton's number two. And now you got some depth in the secondary, which you really need. Let's do a couple more. At Born in Spain V says, instead of Sneed, they should go get PS2. Offer one first, two thirds, and a player like Houston. And then people responded to that person saying, no, we want to keep James Houston. He can really get to the quarterback. And then, of course, people disagreed, and they went back and forth. If you want to check out the comment section, go look at the podcast. But there's a pretty hearty back and forth about if James Houston is any good or not. And then there's this one. Last comment. This one from at edabber710. Talking about me. This guy is by far the most annoying person you have. I swear, every time I find out it's him, I click on a different video. Everyone else is amazing, just not this guy. At least he thinks everybody else is amazing. I then responded, and I said, hey, thanks for watching.
So thank you. I do thank you for watching. So that's going to do it for the Daily Ticket. Let me know what you think about the Troy Weaver incident and this bloody weekend in Detroit sports. When you watch this, also please comment, are the Wings still a playoff team? Let me know. Man, just despicable all around. Catch you tomorrow on a Tuesday. Maybe we got a free agent to talk about. Bye-bye.